Physicists at CERN, the world's largest particle accelerator, have created antimatter, you know, the stuff that destroys matter. Like, should you ever meet yourself, your antimatter self? You would annihilate each other. Then they watched this antimatter move, and guess what? It fell down. That's right, antimatter falls. It's influenced by gravity, the same thing that influences us normal matter folk and everything around us. Hey, Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and in this week's video, let's talk about why antimatter falling is a big deal. I've spoke about this before, but something's wrong with our gravity, or at least the gravity that we know. Our understanding of gravity is pretty much perfectly described by Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. It's held up under extensive testing and observation for over a century, correctly helping us navigate GPS satellites, predicting gravitational lensing, gravitational waves, and even more. But there are still countless aspects of it that don't quite make sense. Like, why is it so weak? Why is it incompatible with all the other forces and even quantum scales? And then what exactly are singularities that we call black holes? Most importantly, what is dark matter? In order to answer these questions, physicists have started looking at how gravity acts on exotic matter, namely antimatter. Antimatter is the opposite of matter. It's made up of antiparticles, which will have the same mass as their corresponding particles, but the opposite electrical charge. So the antiparticle of the electron is the positron, which has a positive charge, and the antiparticle of the proton is the antiproton, which has a negative charge. And in the case of non-charged particles like the neutrino, the corresponding antiparticle, the antineutrino, has an opposite spin. It has a right-handed spin rather than a left-handed one, but they still have the same mass. In particle physics, particularly the standard model, matter and antimatter are created in pairs. This means that for every particle of matter created, a corresponding antiparticle should also be created. And so far, this has been supported by high energy experiments at CERN. But right now, our universe, or what we can see, is mostly matter. Antimatter is extremely rare and mostly made in labs. If everything we created was equal in the Big Bang, then they should have annihilated each other and left a universe of just radiation. We shouldn't exist, but we do. Check out my previous video, Where is all the antimatter? Where I discuss CP violation, a difference between the behavior of matter and antimatter, which could explain why the universe is made of matter instead of antimatter. Some people think that there may even be whole universes created of just antimatter, like a mirror universe of our own where anti-space smog lives. Now, like I said, antimatter has the same mass as normal matter. And since gravity is dependent on mass, you might not think that there should be any difference between how gravity acts on matter and how it acts on antimatter. But this has never been proven in a lab. And there's many ideas of an anti-gravity where antimatter is repelled by matter and vice versa, gravitationally. But these generally violate a load of physical laws. The experiment known as Alpha-G aimed to measure the gravitational acceleration of anti-hydrogen, the antiparticle of hydrogen in Earth's gravitational field. They use anti-hydrogen because its counterpart hydrogen is the most well-studied atom in physics and its properties are precisely known. It's also electrically neutral, which means it doesn't experience electric forces or have complications of electric charge interactions. The neutrality also helps it to be trapped within magnetic fields so it doesn't come into contact with the walls of like the apparatus and annihilate each other. To make the antihydrogen, the physicists produce antiprotons by accelerating protons to high energies and then colliding them with a target. And then they also made positrons, the antiparticle of the electron, and this is made by a radioactive source. These are combined together to make antihydrogen, which they trap in a magnetic trap before releasing them in this vertical apparatus. It turns out that antihydrogen falls down just like hydrogen does. 
Specifically, the experiment was testing the weak equivalence principle. So this principle, WEP for short, states that all bodies should fall with the same acceleration in a gravitational field, regardless of their composition. The results of this experiment suggest that the weak equivalence principle is obeyed, and that antimatter and matter interact with gravity in the same way. Now, this is a significant finding because Einstein was correct once again, gravity is universal. It also means that the asymmetry of matter-antimatter in the universe is unlikely to be due to gravitational effects. Since the anti-hydrogen fell down, it would suggest that anti-gravity does not usually occur in normal circumstances. It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, but it's not normal. And that antimatter and matter are gravitationally attracted to each other. The next steps would be to test with high precision if both hydrogen and anti-hydrogen fall at exactly the same rate. Perhaps they don't couple with gravity in the same way, maybe one falls faster than the other. And that would be interesting. There's several other experiments at CERN working on this very goal, like Aegis and G-Bar. In any case, for now, unfortunately, we still have no idea where all the antimatter is. That's all for this week's video. As always, thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. Please consider joining if you haven't already. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.